Okay. Ah, yes. Uh, good morning. Hi. So. Good morning. I hope you are doing well. Let's try to understand a little bit about what the migrant workers are feeling, especially in context to the the missing migrant workers in Bangalore. So, as we have spoken, we will be trying to. I will we'll do this in an interview mode. I will ask you the questions first, and then you can try to give me answers. But first, I would like you to introduce yourself. All right. Thank you. All right. Uh, thank you for asking. I'm doing good. All right. And uh, my name is Ganoda Jime, and I'm the vice president of the Bangalore Muslim Society of Assam. And I work with Cognizant, and I'm here in Bangalore since 13 years now. Okay, 13 years, long time. Yeah, so uh, I can see from social media that you guys have been doing a really lot of work, and Bangalore has become the destination for missing migrant workers. So could you give me a little update of how many missing migrant workers are there and what would you generally work on? What are the, how do they work? Could you give me a little update? Yes. Sure. All right, now uh, we are more than 2,000 missing migrants in Bangalore. Okay. And uh, uh, most of them work uh, as security guards. And most of them also work as uh, sales executive in the retail section. And few of them work in restaurants, and few of them work in uh, construction sites, and few of them in hotel industries and in small restaurants. Okay. And most of them generally, if you happen to ask uh, where do they generally come from, uh, they come from every missing villages of okay. Assam. Okay. And you can, you can say, uh, as there's a saying from uh, in the same way you will find every missing members from every missing villages so all so what i can say is that they are from uh, yeah so they're all young workers young boys generally uh, how, most, old, how old are they uh, most of them are youth most of them are youth and uh, I think 50% would be youth. They would be from uh, the age, the maximum would be, uh, I would say 50% 50, uh, 50 would be from the age of 25. Mm. And there are a few who just passed their uh, matriculation has uh, come here. They are less in numbers though. Mm. And, I think the age between 25 to 30 would be the highest in number. Okay, so tell me, you have stayed in Bangalore for 13 years now, no? So over the years, have you seen increase in their numbers that they have continued, the number of missing migrant workers have increased in Bangalore? Uh, it's, I would say it has decreased a bit. Uh, okay. Till last year, till last year, the number was uh, bigger okay but then this year uh, i could see a uh, decline okay and then few of them has moved back to assam or few of them has moved to different states like kerala and to gujarat ah okay so they have moved to different uh, okay so uh, yeah. now you guys are distributing relief and everything so you know you have been to their houses and how they live and the conditions so could you tell me how they live and what is their con working conditions and basically the accommodation base how do they live in what conditions they do live? All right. The condition, uh, all right, because people come here to save money, right? Yeah. And the kind of job most of them do, uh, they don't earn up to, you know, they don't earn much. So they rent out a small room. In a small room, there would be around four to five members, correct? Uh, if the room is bigger, at times, the, the number would be more uh, because they come here thinking that uh, they will work here and they will save money or whatever they would like to do with their saving. But then they live in a small room and the number would range from four, five, four to five members to seven to eight members. As of now, I think the number of members in a room would be more than six to seven members because uh, most of them are laid off. Uh, they don't go to work. Earlier, when they used to go to work, they work. They used to work in shift, shift wise. So in the morning, some would one or two would be in the room, 
and the in the evening uh, vice versa so they would adjust that way now as of now i think the the kind of room they have rented out is uh, out is a bit adjust a bit congested okay so uh, uh... How are they managing in the lockdown period? Are they getting wages, salaries, or no salaries? Do they have any, any, any? How are they managing in this time? At, all right. Uh, at this point of time, they are relying on credits. Credit in the sense, the uh, our guys used to buy those groceries from one shop. Okay. Uh, maybe they they. They are the regular customers of the shopkeepers from maybe a couple of years or maybe few more than uh, three to four years or maybe few months. Mm. So in this way, they have, uh, you know, uh, they have a bonding between the shopkeepers and our uh, our migrant missing guys. Mm. So they do give them credit, but then the credit, the kind of credit they receive now is not up to you know, uh, not like the usual month. Mm. So after the lockdown, the kind of needs or the kind of uh, daily necessity they would require, so the shopkeepers could not provide them. Okay. So that's one way of, you know, managing themselves. And there are a few who just came down to Bangalore before the lockdown. And few of them, few of they were a few of their friends or family members, uh, those who were working would help them out uh, to survive. They would share them. Uh, I mean, since they were working, they would help each other. Mm -hmm. The same is also happening with the guys who are laid off mm -hmm. and those who are not working as of now. Mm -hmm. So the guys who are working, they're helping them out. Mm -hmm. And few falls, I just happen to speak, uh, maybe, 15 or 20 days back, they also told that they're asking, they're getting money from their home. Okay. So, yes. So, way, yeah. oh, they're sending money from. So you, you yeah. were telling me before I move to the next question that some people are laid off. No. Who are those people? Yeah. Like, are some people who are laid off also in during this lockdown, yes. people are laid off. Uh, this is happening because see, most of the IT guys, are, uh, most of our guys are working as security guards. Yes. Right. Yeah. And most of them are working uh, in retail section. So, and in IT, if you happen to see, most of them are working from home. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's totally locked down for the IT section. So, sectors, sorry. So, for, so at this point of time, they also don't need security guards to be in the office. Okay. Because they don't have much work to do. Mm. Uh, this is one of the reasons why they're let off. Yeah. And, uh, and in case of retail section, the same thing because of the lockdown, there's uh, nothing happening. Mm. So they are laid off and, uh, and they are afraid uh, they might not get salary for not going to work. Okay, so but uh, they are laid off temporarily or they, will they get back to work or they are just completely laid off? What is the company? They, that's, we can, uh, it depends if the market comes up again. Yeah, I mean, if the lockdown is over. You never know because if this worked for them, they might still, if uh, IT people don't start going back to offices, then they might be laid off. It depends on the situation again. Uh, it's uncertain. Yes, okay. Okay, let's talk about uh, Missing Society of Bangalore then. In your capacity, how are you helping these migrant workers? Like what are the, what are the activities that you are doing currently to help these migrant workers? Yeah. All right, see, um, the lockdown in Bangalore happened from 24th March. Yes. And uh, our people started calling us for help from uh, 2nd April, and we started uh, helping each other from 2nd of April. Uh, so f since we knew this is going to happen for a long time, so we started contributing among ourselves. Uh, there, there are a few generous contributions uh, from the IT sector in our, uh, from our society and there are few members. Uh, we also had reached out to a few donors. Uh, mm -hmm. I think Lee Sun Foundation from uh, Assam, mm -hmm. they were kind enough to donate us some good amount. And also we have posted uh, for contributions on our Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Facebook post. 
and we did get donations from uh, abroad from those are friends of our members mm. and we also had requested few of the professionals like doctors back home uh, they did contribute to our needs and few so but then that was not enough we we could collect just around maybe 27k mm. so we started and we started helping each other from 2nd of april and our fund dried up almost by 14 of april we the fund was not we were not getting the funds and the fund dried up mm. and like Yeah, so what happened was lucky. We were lucky actually. Uh, there's a, uh, when the fund dried, dried up, we were very worried and we were like, how to go forward from here on? Mm. Then we did, luckily, uh, like an angel, uh, the founder of Sunbird Trust, his mm. name is uh, retired Colonel Christopher John Drago. Uh, they have they have school in Marjuli, they have school in Manipur, and they also have school in Haflong. Mm. Uh, they're they, they're running a school in the name of Hummingbird in Marjuli. And since Sun and since Sunbird Trust had been hel helping almost fifty communities, almost forty to fifty communities of Northeast, mm. and uh, retired Colonel Christopher Rego, he was like. I have got a school in uh, Majuli, which we mostly populated uh, by missing community. So he asked one of the teachers in uh, uh, teachers from his school, mm. uh, asking, "Do you guys have any community in Bangalore?" Mm. All right. Mm. So he, uh, uh, in that way, we got connected. So he, one of the school teachers, happened to call up to one of our uh, guys here in Bangalore, and then. He connected me to Christopher Rego. Mm. All right. Then uh, we had a Christopher, Colonel Christopher Rego proactively connected to us, and he was he stood firmly with us. Uh, from the time we uh, connected him, he had provided or arranged rations for us in hundreds. Mm. The first day, after fourteen on sixteen, he he had called us to his trust. Mm. We have been there and he provided us for 200 members. Mm. Again on 16, again on 17, he provided same numbers. That was maybe for 200, 200, same numbers. Again on 18, again on 18, he provided us for 500 members. Mm. So again, recently he provided us for, uh, uh, he gave us 100 packs that could, uh, we could provide to around 300 people. Okay. And then again, last, I think Wednesday, again Wednesday he has given us around 300 kits that will be, with that kits will be able to cover around 600 people. Okay, so, so he, uh, yeah, so please. he's standing firmly, firmly behind us and I, I mean, that's, we just can't imagine the kind of help we are getting. The only, the need as of now we need is the transportation charges mm. because we need to book mini truck through the porter application. And then we need to, you know, we have to, at a certain point of time, we travel up to 60 kilometers, 70 kilometers because uh, our guys don't stay in the uh, same locality, all right? Some stay near to the airport, which is almost 40 kilometers from here, and few of them stays a different part of Bangalore. So it's not so it's not easy to cover up uh, on the same day. Hmm. How are you managing? So do you have passes? Like you have passes for to go around because it's a lockdown period. How are you allowed to go out? Yeah, we we are also we also have a group called Naughty Solidarity. Uh, that's a uh, all the Nautilus group are in this uh, group and we are connected with the Nautilus officers. We have Nautilus officer named Srinath Josie. Mm -hmm. uh, he is also the district commissioner of Southeast Bangalore. Mm -hmm. So we are connected in WhatsApp group and if there, is, if there are any meetings or any emergencies, we get immediate help from the Nautilus officer. So in this way, every community were provided to two passes. Mm -hmm. Uh, in the beginning, few of, were, few of them were a bit hesitant uh, to be part of this 
you know uh, to help uh, to outreach to the people in this because they were very scared about the virus that might also uh, hamper them or affect them so because of this many were hesitant but then slowly the number increased they started coming out so we have got uh, more passes now so in the beginning we were issued our community had i myself had applied for one and the other one was jotin by so we had two passes now again we have applied for few but then those the passes we got are minus i mean it is still the lockdown is over and the passes they have issued now is just for temporary maybe for two or three days okay that's how it is okay okay so uh, it's difficult so you have still problems of you still need funds for transportation you are saying no right 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 we still need volunteers because uh, we can i'm working i work <laughs> in the morning if there's any stop coming i i along with few of our volunteers go and get this stop again we keep that stock in one of our uh, uh, community members house and then on saturday or su some sunday or maybe whenever there's the very need of going out we go and distribute maybe on the same day okay so i i i, I, I used to manage by uh, you know going early in the morning collecting the stocks maybe distributing before because i have to log in uh, in the afternoon after 2 right so we used to manage that way do you have do you, did you get any help from missing organizations like that or did you reach out to them or no we did we did reach out yeah. i think the very time we came to know about the lockdown i have spoken to mla bhuvan pego i have informed him that this is what the situation is going to be yeah. in few days time so i think he immediately they had a meeting and they had planned out to uh, uh, you know plan out to transfer some amount to everybody's account yes uh, those who is living in bangalore yeah and maybe yeah that was proactive that was good but then however the execution was a bit slow maybe it was for for the first time even for them to experience uh, working related to bank details mm -hmm. so that can be one issue yeah. but then yes they did help us and few of them have received 1500 uh 1500 in their accounts and few also have got uh, from the state government mm. i think from the state government they have issued uh, they have transferred around 2000 okay okay so but not all of so us now not everyone has not all, not, all, not everyone so as of now when i happen to spoke to them the dmpk general secretary dilok said that uh, around 3000 members uh, they have transferred 1500 each to 300 uh, 3000 members as of now the number was more than 5000 something 5000 plus somewhere okay including bangalore and other other states okay so okay but 5000 okay it's still there. so did you talk to this migrant workers obviously social distancing is not a possibility in the rooms that they stay no that's right that's right that's right but did you talk to them that what what after the lockdown hap ends how will they will they what is their feeling will they stay on or they want to go back to assam well, what is their general feeling? How do you feel? As of now, because of the fear, 50 or 60 percent would like to go back home. They would like to go back home because of the, you know, homesick. Few have experiment losing their job for the first time. Yes. Right. Because of this, they have the homesick, yes. and few of the family members are asking them to come back. And because of the not only uh, not only because of the homesick, because the family members are asking them to come back home because of the more positive cases in the city than back home. That's one of the yeah main reason for them to ask uh, to ask their people to come back home. So your the relief that you give that generally more most is through rations. You generally give rations, no? You don't give cash. Rations. Yeah. Okay. Rations. No. No cash. Obviously, you need support in that. Um, uh, on a general level, why do you think that the people, the missing people, I think generally when we see the trend, the missing people used to keep coming to North Indian states, but now they've generally shifted towards South Indian states like Bangalore, Kerala, and other places. Why do you think that has happened? I think uh, uh, they have ample of opportunities in Bangalore. 
yeah. uh, both organized and unorganized sector. All right. And maybe one of the reasons could be Bangalore is a beautiful city, to be honest. And also the weather condition could be one reason and also a good environment to work. Do you think lack of like a less racism than other other states could also be a reason? Yes, yes, yes. That do happen, but then not up. But then I think uh, it does happen, but then not to that extent, you know, like other states. Okay. If I were to ask you, like a uh, you as a person, how do you do you? What do you think of that? Missing people should they keep coming as workers, or should they try to find opportunities back in Assam? What well, what could be a solution to this? Because people are young people. Their villages are getting empty, you know, in villages. Young people are all moving. Good question. Out. Yes, all moving good out. question. What, how do you That's a good question. That's a good question as well as tough question. <laughs> yes. yes. All right. Yes. I mean, it sounds easy, but then yeah. But then I have been thinking about this. Uh, to be very honest. All right. See, uh, it depends on person to person. All right. It depends on their uh, interest. Yes. What they want to be in life and what they would like to learn and do something different. Right, but then as per my understanding, most of them come here because they don't have opportunity back home. All right, uh, and few don't want to be the burden of their family members or of their uh, parents, and few of them are youth. Those who just are those who just came out after matriculation or maybe after graduation. All right, so. If you happen to see, we have lots of land back home. Yes. Every missing houses will have at least uh, a piece. They have a piece of land to build yeah, their own houses. Few, or a few yes, a few, yes. yes. So my here, my see, even if they happen to come here, I would suggest them to, you know, uh, to upgrade themselves uh, up they should do a, they should work as well as uh, maybe over the weekends they can learn something uh, say they can learn or they can uh, join a course or maybe they can go to, they can develop their skills uh, mm -hmm. most of them if I happen to see uh, most of them are working in security guards and they do have time mm -hmm. all right maybe in the weekends uh, they can go they can join a course or they can learn something new or they can see uh, why Bangalore is so developed and why it's not happening back home mm -hmm. and if you happen to see most of uh, uh, our commercial area like Silaptar or Gogamu or Janai if you happen to see most of the shopkeepers are from outside Yes. Even the barbers, even the barbers, and even the, uh, you know, those, uh, like, uh, those phone repairers. All right, all are from, all are outsiders. Mm -hmm. So they do our missing guys. They do come here and they work in restaurants, right? Mm -hmm. They work in restaurants. They few of them work in garages and few of them work in retail shop. So they have learned a lot. So what they can do is they can, if they can do it here, they can also do the same back home. Mm. So that's the mindset we need to, you know, uh, we need to tell them about, and we need to ask them to, you know, learn, learn from here. But then even I think as per my knowledge, few of them have moved back last year because they knew that they can not be here for a for long time. Mm. They can keep working here for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that could be one of the reasons why the number has decreased. Mm -hmm. So for my in I would like to suggest that uh, they should come here, they should work, they should save money, they should buy land back home. And they should also uh, learn, uh, I mean, they should upskill their skills, what they are already using in uh, places, in, res in restaurants. Mm -hmm or even in construction site. Mm -hmm. I heard people say uh, they have in where uh, in construction site where they work, they also have learned many things. So 
uh, back home, if they can go back home, they can study uh, using all the, whatever they have learned here. They can apply back home. Yes, I think this is a very important suggestion. I think uh, they can develop their skill set in Bangalore and then definitely go back and and then start something on their own and then do those things in their own. Uh, but last question before we stop this formal thing and we can uh, do you think uh, people like us like you me who are let's let's say who are higher up the ladder who have a, a, a little more skill than the migrant workers have can we contribute something to them can we like probably your idea i, I really liked it a lot maybe on the weekends we can go and teach them something or we can ask we can get them connected to like a various courses so so what are the things that we we can do like what are the things if Bangalore is, missing societies is already doing something then you can tell me that also but also for us general people who will watch this what are the things that we can generally do to support them in in the long term not in terms of like just surviving this lockdown but in long term to develop their skills and to long term to help the missing of community I think uh, most of them don't have guide proper guide they do not know what to do how to go forward that's one of the main reasons even if they have completed their graduation, uh, they don't know what course to take up, right? And how to move forward, they think, okay, they have done graduation, that's enough for me, all right? So I think uh, we should, I think we should be a proper guide to them. I mean, based on their ability, I think once we start meeting them over the weekends, we will also get to know what kind of education uh, background they are from mm. so based on that we can uh, suggest them yeah. and I think uh, even uh, this uh, MSc chief he was speaking to me that he wanted to come to Bangalore to discuss uh, related to these issues how do we bring back home mm. to our people he had uh, uh, he wanted and he wanted to come down to Bangalore he also wanted to include Delhi uh, Pune and Gujarat guys too, and they wanted, uh, he wanted them to come down to Bangalore and wanted to have a meeting related to this. And I think what we can do now is we need to tell them what are the uh, courses they can go for, right? After, after that, I mean, once they start taking up the courses, uh, I think we can ask them to join el somewhere else, get the ex uh, experience, and then if they can apply it, uh, the same back home that would be great yeah. so these are few things i think we need to do a bit of survey related to this because we exactly do not know what kind of uh, education background they come from mm. right so and but then uh, there are a few people those who have not completed their education as well they have just passed tent and they have come down and there are a few uh, those who are already married Yes, they are supporting their family members, and they are not able to go back home since long. Maybe even few. I have seen three to four years. They have not gone back home. Mm. They send back home money, but then they are taking good uh, care of their family members. Mm. All right, they are supporting their family well. But then the fear. I mean, but then they do not know what will happen to them in future, mm. because even if they want to go back home, they cannot leave the job and go back home. Mm. All right. Because of this reason, they are staying here for a long time, and we should. I in for this, especially for people those are married, we have been encouraged encouraging them to buy land back home, uh, develop your land because uh, I think if you have land and if you happen to develop the land, we can do. We have lots of opportunities, and I think now the communication is uh, good as well back home. Now. I, I heard few people, few from Dibruga, they come to to, uh, <laughs> uh, to buy vegetables in Silapata. Mm. So, so I think we can, uh, this is what we discuss with the married person. With the youth, I have been asking, they play good, they play cricket here, they play football here. Mm. They have good skills, so I used to ask them, you know, uh, why not, you keep playing and why don't you try uh, to join army or mm. in any other military departments and all. So we do give this uh, this kind of advice. However, I think we just give the advice, but then we also will have to guide them how they should go for it. 
Mm. There's a few things we can think about and, you know, I think we need to plan out uh, and guide them how to go about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much for this, but this is brief for now, but I will have long, longer interviews later. But I think on the last point, what I would say is that I have full support. I, I'll give you my full support. And if we can do something on this mentorship program, then obviously we can, I am ready to design questionnaires and then we do a small survey and understand what are the needs. And then if we, there's a need to develop mentorship program on how to, and guide them to proper revenues, I think we, there's, there, that's a good starting point that we can do. So for me, I think yeah. it's, it's something that is very interesting. Uh,